This Monday is the only English language debate that Justin Trudeau will participate in this election, but his hand-picked debate commission has banned our Rebel News reporters and other conservative media from even attending the debate. Our journalists, Kean Bexty and David Menzies, each applied. I personally wrote to the gatekeepers myself weeks ago, but only today, right before the weekend, and the debate itself is on Monday, did they have the courtesy to even write back, and they flatly refused us permission. Permission? It's a free country. That's all the permission we need. We don't need special permission to cover the only debate the Prime Minister deigns to participate in in English. It's our right. Understand what I mean here. We're not applying to be one of the debate moderators who were selected by Trudeau's hand-picked debate commission precisely because of their history of being soft on Trudeau. They're all left-leaning advocates, including the CBC's Rosemary Barton, seen here taking a selfie with Trudeau, and Althea Raj, seen here taking a selfie with Trudeau, and Chantal Bear, who was the Trudeau scholar at the Trudeau Foundation, and now all these Trudeau advocates are going to grill Trudeau. Yeah, sure. Now, we know we'd never be allowed to actually ask Trudeau a question in the debate. We might ask something tough. But this ban means we won't even be allowed in the building at all. We won't even be allowed in the big holding room with hundreds of other reporters. We're banned, not by a political party, by the government, the government itself. That's illegal. And the excuse they gave? Well, you can see the one-line explanation offered by the government press gallery. It is our view that your organization is actively involved in advocacy. Well, hang on, what does that mean? That we have a point of view, but so do all the journalists on that panel. Keen and David do real reporting every day, and like I've told you before, these same gatekeepers personally approved journalists from Xinhua, the Chinese Communist Party's propaganda organ. They'll let anyone in unless you're a conservative. And the arrogance of them telling us we're advocates, they're Unifor journalists and members of other journalism unions who have literally set up partisan campaign groups, super PACs, registered with Election Canada to campaign in support of Justin Trudeau. Oh, and they haven't done this just to us, they've done this to Andrew Lawton, also a young journalist from True North. They're, they're keeping out anyone who leans conservative. So, both True North and Rebel News have decided to seek an emergency court injunction on Monday morning to stop Trudeau's hand-picked debates commission from keeping us out of the building. We're going to court. I spoke at length with our lawyers today. They're going to work all weekend to get ready. The emergency application is on Monday in federal court in Toronto. You're welcome to attend. I'll be there personally, as will more of our team. I'd appreciate the moral support, but I actually need your help in order to get this law firm to go on an emergency basis to work all weekend, I had to send them a retainer of $10,000. I know that sounds high, but it's two lawyers and their staff all weekend, and it's a big application on Monday. That's how much these things cost. Remember, the government has unlimited lawyers on their side, paid for by your tax dollars. This really is David versus Goliath. Please go to LetUsReport.com. Help me raise the $10,000. This is about freedom of the press. It's about making the election campaign more fair, more democratic, more meaningful. And it's about Justin Trudeau's bizarre war on journalists that he seems to be getting away with during this campaign and that no one else is stopping him. Well, we're going to stop him on Monday. Please visit LetUsReport.com. Thanks. Trudeau, since your multiple use of blackface became an international scandal, Canada's international reputation has been irrep irreparably harmed. Have you reached out to any African leaders or any leaders from the Middle East to apologize for your conduct? Canada will continue to engage in a positive, constructive way around the world, standing up for human rights, uh, engaging uh, with leaders right around the world, because we know that uh, promoting our values and uh, prosperity for everyone around the world is good for Canadians and creates better opportunities for everyone. So that didn't answer the question at all. Have you spoken to any African leaders or leaders from the Middle East to apologize for your personal conduct? Ikean RNN, have you, your campaign, or any other agents secured non-disclosure agreements from anyone about inappropriate sexual personal conduct? No. 
uh, follow up, the 2001 yearbook from West Point Gray Academy says that you and convicted sex offender Christopher Ingboldson made a young student's quote, life at WPGA a lot more interesting slash amusing, end quote. How did you two keep her amused? We were teachers. David Menzies, Rebel News. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, you left West Point Gray Academy in the middle of a term, which is highly unusual. It was a law firm that made this announcement, which is also highly unusual. Sir, can you tell us the real reason why you left so abruptly? And did it involve any kind of uh, sexual misconduct at the school? I wrote three pages on that in my autobiography, uh, and it involved absolutely nothing of the sort of the rumors that you're trying to spread. Even so, Mr. Prime Minister, a follow-up question. Um, why did so many teenage girls write uh, so passionately about you in the yearbook? Was there any connection to you having a relationship with these girls or their mothers? I was a good teacher. Mr. Scheer, only 6% of Canadians indicate they want to see immigration increased, yet you are on board with the Trudeau Liberals' plan to increase immigration to 350,000 migrants per year. Why is that? I will ensure that our targets respond directly to the needs of our economy and our population. But sir, I'm curious how you came to that number of 350,000. Um, many of these migrants are, of course, uh, family reunification uh, cases. They're not going to contribute to the economy. They're, in fact, going to take away from it. I'm just wondering, again, how did you come to this number? And are you just afraid to dispute Justin Trudeau when it comes to immigration numbers? Key and Bexie, Rebel Media. Justin Trudeau's platform says that he will ban certain speech on the internet, especially speech that is deemed, quote, hurtful. I'm wondering why you haven't been more vocal about op any opposition to that, if you are opposed to that, uh, given uh, your primary campaign, you talk so much about free speech on university campuses. Why doesn't that apply to uh, the digital world? Hi, uh, Elizabeth May told me earlier today, and I think she spoke in the other debate uh, re uh, recently, that she wants the Alberta oil sands offline by, in a decade. What's the date that you want the Alberta oil sands offline? Sir, what's your name? My name's Key and I'm with RNN. You're with who? RNN. I'm going to pass on the question, my friend. Okay, so I'll, do I get the follow-up then? Or are you just going to pass on the question for... Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to answer it. Because it's a hard one, or...? No, I'm just not going to answer your so, question. Okay, Anyone else so can the follow-up, follow I guess, would be... Uh, how do you have the moral authority to take the Alberta oil sands offline, given Alberta most just recently rejected your party in the largest democratic mandate that the province has ever seen? I'm not going to answer your question, but thanks. It's a hard one, hey? Yeah. Thanks, man. Ms. May, uh, David Menzies with uh, Rebel News. Ms. May, in 2015, you stated that convicted terrorist Omar Khadr had more class than the entire effing conservative cabinet under Stephen Harper. Do you still believe in 2019 that this convicted terrorist has more class than the entire conservative party under Andrew Scheer? Have you ever been to a press gallery dinner? Do you yes. understand the concept of it being ridiculous with lots of humor? I'm sorry, that's not a real question. Oh, sorry, if, if this was an attempt at humor, a supplemental question, do you think that the widow you think and, the fatherless children, and the fatherless children of Christopher Spear, his murder victim, do you think they found that funny, Miss May? I'm Miss May, Key and Bexty, Rebel Media. Um, my question revolves around what you told me earlier today. You said you want to take the Alberta oil sands offline within a decade. I'm wondering how you have the moral authority to do that when your party isn't polling competitively in any riding in Alberta whatsoever. Uh, first of all, it's not news. If you'd paid any attention to our platform since May, you would have known that. Our plan is a phasing out of dependence on fossil fuels with a particular focus on uh, just transition for workers. We're very concerned about workers in the fossil fuel sector and the question of what we do next framed as moral authority has something to do with whether our generation has the moral authority to end human civilization within the lifetime of our children. Do you think that the Alberta oil sands are going to end civilization? I don't think you understand the science. I do. I, I have a Bachelor of Science in Energy Sciences and Energy Economics. <laughs> I understand Sorry. quite well. I don't want to laugh Hi, uh, Kian Bexty, Rebel News, right oh, here. Sorry. Uh, my question revolves around uh, journalism in Canada. 
three journalists came to this uh, debate tonight, uh, but they weren't going to be let in, myself included. We had to apply for an emergency court injunction to be allowed to cover the one English debate that our prime minister took part in. What does that say about the state of journalism in Canada and the contempt that the prime minister currently has for journalists? It's a shame, you know, uh, we're a free democracy. We believe in freedom. I Keen Bexie, Rebel News. My question is uh, about uh, the $600 million media bailout. I'm wondering if you think, has that bailout compromised the coverage of this election? Uh, first of all, as you know, we will, we uh, won't give that money to uh, traditional media. Uh, I think it is not the role of the government to bail out media. I think the media must be independent from the government, not dependent from the government. And uh, we don't know if that will have an impact. Uh, maybe I'll let Canadian uh, decide on that. But for us, we want to be sure that our media will be independent. My follow-up on a separate topic is in regards to national defense. None of the debates that, ha the several debates debates that uh, the Prime Minister has participated in, they haven't really covered national defense. Are you bothered by that? Dave Menzies, Rebel News. Uh, Mr. Bernier, um, Mr. Scheer did a press conference uh, a few days ago at the infamous Roxham Road crossing into Canada. He spoke about things like hiring extra border guards, uh, tightening the um, safe third country agreement with the US. And I think a lot of people who want more border security would applaud those. However, he didn't go as far as suggesting to build a wall or a fence. I am curious, what is your position in that regard in terms of tightening up border security via a physical impediment to these illegal immigrants coming into Canada? Uh, first of all, as you know, uh, 45,000 of them crossed our border for the last two years. We must fix that. And Mr. Bernie, uh, second question uh, on a different subject. Um, as you know, the only reason why I am here, my colleague Kian Bexley is here, my friend Andrew Lawton with True North is here, is due to a federal court order that we got at the 11th hour on Monday. Uh, you, sir, were the only federal leader to tweet out your congratulations to that. I am curious, what, why do you think the other federal leaders uh, didn't have any comment to make about really a groundbreaking judgment when it comes to freedom of the press? My, I, it's very uh, sad that uh, they are not fighting for freedom of the press. And uh, so, you know, you're a journalist. Maybe uh, I'll like your question. Maybe I won't like your question. But your role is to ask tough questions. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.